Welcome to Stalking the Pantry with Hal, a series of articles, videos, and other ramblings to provide information and resources to help everyone to be better prepared and hopefully have some fun along the way. Welcome to another edition of Stalking the Pantry. When we're recording this, it's just a couple of weeks from Thanksgiving. And at Thanksgiving, we're looking around at all the things that are traditional. And besides pumpkins and turkey and stuffing, one of the things that is almost always in every Thanksgiving meal are potatoes. So potatoes have often got a bad rap as being uh, too full of starch or too high in carbs. But the secret, of course, is moderation in all things, including moderation and moderation. Today I want to talk about ways that if you have an abundance of potatoes from your garden or from a gleaning program or just an amazing sale, you can preserve them. Now, fresh, uncooked potatoes like these will keep approximately two weeks outside of uh, proper storage, just kept at room temperature. And if you have an area where you can store them in, uh, where the temperature is somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees, they'll keep up to two months. Now, when you store them in what would be what used to be called a root cellar uh, or any kind of cellaring, you want to keep them in a paper bag or a mesh bag and keep them out of the light and keep them at that limited temperature. Now, you might say, well, why can't I just put them in the fridge? Well, you can, but when they go down to below 40, sugars start to be overproduced inside the potato. And you may not want them to have the sweet taste that develops because that sweetness is often has a, a strange aftertaste. So how do we keep them longer than a couple of months? One way would be to pressure can them. Now that's complicated and adds a whole nother level of expense and time, but we will be uh, addressing pressure canning sometime later. Um, you can freeze them or you can dehydrate them. And so those are simple ways with limited amount of equipment. And today we're going to be talking about freezing. But before we get into the technique for that, you want to know what kind of potatoes are best for what. And an article that we're going to have posted on our website goes into great detail. But in general, starchier potatoes are ones that are best for like making mashed potatoes uh, for storage or um, ones that are less starchy, like the Yukon Gold, even the purple potato, are best for uh, storing in, uh, uh, like shredding and making uh, hash browns out of, or something like that. But the best, the very best, for making mashed potatoes are the russet potato. But like I said, the article that'll be on our website goes into some great detail about all the different kinds. So as a lot of you know, especially if you've ever worked on a farm growing potatoes and you have a freeze, when a, a regular uncooked potato freezes, it's pretty much ruined. They turn black inside and they get really mushy and they spoil very quickly. But if a potato is partially cooked, as in the case of making hash browns, or if you uh, have hash mashed potatoes, whether you make them specifically for freezing or as a side dish to be added to another meal later, uh, then they will uh, stay. Now the interesting thing is that you have to prepare them in two different ways. If you're making uh, shredded potatoes or chunked potatoes for using in hash browns or something like that, you can just, what we would say, blanch. Just lightly cook them for a little while in boiling water, and then they'll keep very well. But when a potato is completely cooked, as in a mashed potato, if you do it that way, it, when you uh, defrost it, it becomes very, very grainy. 
So the secret there is adding fats, which is a lot of the reason why uh, they developed the ideas, besides the excellent taste, of adding a lot of butter or even cream to them. So on our website in that same article is a really decadent recipe that has cream, sour cream, and butter in it. So it's really, really rich. Uh, but you can make it with a lot less of the fats, but you do need some fat if you're going to freeze your mashed potatoes. So I didn't think that we needed to necessarily demonstrate how to shred potatoes. That's pretty straightforward. But after you've shredded them, you want to store them as you're finishing shredding them up in a bowl of cold water. Because if it's exposed to air, they'll start to brown. You drain that and then put them into boiling water for up to three minutes. Just enough that they're well blanched. You take them out, drain them again, and put them in ice water in order to stop the cooking process. And then when you're done, after you've drained them, and I've gone ahead and done these ahead of time, they... I'm going to go ahead and form part of these into pre-made patties. And you want to put them on something like um, these silicone baking sheets or even on uh, something like, um, you know, baking paper because it makes it so much easier to get them off of the sheets. And you want to put them in a fairly thin layer. And I know some people who even go ahead and weigh these out so that they're exactly the same. But we're not going to do that. So on this side is what it would be like if you were just spreading them out. And on this other side is what if you were going to go ahead and pre-make patties. So you want these to not be too high, but they can be a little bit higher. These you want about a single layer. And then once you got them all arranged on your tray with a silicone sheet or not, you want to go ahead and gently pat them to draw out excess water. All right, well now after this has had a chance to sit and absorb some of the excess water, I was going to do a magic trick where I whipped this back and they turned back into whole potatoes, but that didn't quite work out for today. And so those just go into the fridge and finish cooling them down if they're warm and then into the freezer for an hour to two hours until they're frozen solid. And then when they are uh, completely solid, you can bag them up into a Ziploc bag or put them into um, a vacuum pack if you have like a food saver or something like that. Uh, food savers where you get all the oxygen out of the bag will help keep them, you'll be able to keep them for over a year easily in like a vacuum, in, a Ziploc bag, it probably they recommend six months. And now that doesn't mean that they've gone bad. It just means that the nutrients are starting to degrade after that time period. And so now we're going to cut away from this for a moment and I'm going to set up and show you mashed potatoes. So here I have pre-made a batch of those ultra rich mashed potatoes. There's about, oh, two tablespoons of butter and a liberal amount of sour cream and half and half in here. Uh, first of all, it makes them stick together well so that you could form them if you wish. And you can also freeze them in different containers. Like, pardon my hands, these are going to go in the freezer for me, and I did wash them. But I really have become a fan of silicone molds. So you can either just put these straight on a tray and freeze them, or you can pop them out ahead of time. 
you can also do a whole lot. Now this is about um, three quarters of a cup and each of these are about one cup. If you're diabetic like I am, I still eat potatoes, but moderation, moderation. Now if you want to move quickly and you want to do quite a few, any of your standard measuring cups. Now they're not necessarily as pretty. And we'll do a few of these just to demonstrate. And there we are. These will go in the refrigerator for a little bit and then go directly into the freezer. Uh, they're a little thicker so it may take more than the two hours. But when they're solid, uh, then you can vacuum pack them or you can put them into a Ziploc bag. So thank you for coming in today and joining our virtual canning party. In a week or so, we'll be doing a feature on uh, dehydrating potatoes, both as slices, which are really excellent for a gratin or even refrying after you've rehydrated them, or as what's called uh, potato or vegetable leathers, where they're dehydrated very fine. You can take them on camping trips or you can use them just like you would uh, a store-bought box of potato buds. So thank you for joining us. Be safe and take care. Thank you for spending some time with us as we explore preserving food at home. If you'd like more information about the Center for Food Preservation Arts, uh, visit our website at preservefoods.blogspot.com you can also find more videos on our YouTube channel and please like us on Facebook. There are links at the end of this video, but also in the comments section. So please join us in our next virtual canning party as we continue stocking the pantry.